Hi, my name's Kathleen. I'm the owner of Road to Freedom Life Coaching. I am a holistic life coach, and I've also developed a system called Journey Work, where people can go and um, release the, the heavy pains and the, the sadness that they've been carrying around a long, long time, and start a new life. Today, what I wanted to talk to you about is the fact that we are surrounded by heroes. And right now, I just wanted to tell you about a couple of the heroes I've had the privilege to work with. I'm not going to give you their names because I want to keep that private for them. Um, first off, though, when you think of a hero, what does that mean to you? Do, does someone like um, Superman or you know one one of those characters, superhero characters, come to mind? Um, do you look up to your dad or your mom, um, our service men and women, our teachers, our policemen and women? My goodness, the list could go on and on. Well. The heroes I want to tell you about today have had no easy life. And there was a purpose in that. And so I think that I will start telling you about a serviceman that I helped. And by helping him, what I mean is I'm there to support you to let go of those burdens. I can't do it for you. I'm just a facilitator. These people I'm going to be telling you about had my full support, but they did the work, and so can you. So this serviceman that I want to tell you about was someone who was one of the first people on the ground um, for Desert Storm, and he ended up being a sniper. And of course, having that job, he was left with many, many nightmares, many nightmarish mind movies. And he wasn't sleeping hardly at all. Now this sweet man goes off to war, does what he believes is right. He's trying to, to be there for his country. Um, and when he finally does get home, he goes to his mom and dad's and he gets in the backyard, walks in the backyard just in time to see his dad try to commit suicide by blowing his head off. And I'm not, I'm not saying this to upset you. I, I want you to understand where this young man was and the heaviness he was feeling. And um, he came to me because he just could not sleep. And so as we worked through and using emotional freedom technique and journey work, um, as we were working one session, and he was particularly upset about walking into that situation with his dad and I can't even imagine walking into something like that. Now his dad had been um, a policeman for a long time. And so this just crushed this young man that his dad would have done that. And he knew his dad had some things he was depressed about. Um, but certainly nothing like that. I mean, to be a policeman, that kind of comes along with the job that you see a lot of things that the rest of us don't have to see. At any rate, um, while we were working through um, a session, his dad, who has been dead for a few years now, showed up to my right side, which is usually where they have always shown up. And now, I don't know these people. I just met this young man. And 
his dad came through, and this was the daytime, which um, it's much harder for a being to come through in the daytime than it is at night because of all the electricity that's on in the city and in the home. And, and so this being, this young man's dad, wanted so desperately to get through to his son. And so he came through and what he was, the dad was telling me was, ask my son if he remembers the accident I was in. And so then I would repeat to the, to the young man what the dad was saying. And of course he was feeling a bit strange. I mean, I didn't know his dad was going to be showing up. That just sometimes happens with the work I do. Um, and I think it was making him feel a little uncomfortable. And so the dad, knowing that, described to me exactly the accident that happened. And I was able to describe it to this young man. And the dad was able to reach out to his son. And he was able to explain what happened when he had been in that accident that he was having these little mini strokes for quite a while and he he was not able to use his full brain and he could not think clearly anymore and um, so he wanted his son to know how sorry he was that that had happened and it was because of this accident and these um, little mini strokes he was having in his brain that was why he took his life. He, he wasn't thinking right. And in fact, he did not um, commit the act of suicide in a very, I don't know how to say this, good way. Um, he didn't do it right. And it was a, a painful death for him and certainly painful for his son. And he'd been a policeman a long time. And one of the things he asked his son was, don't you think that me being a policeman this long, I would have known how to take my own life in a better way than that? And I would never have done that for you or your mom to find me. That I want you to understand, son, I could not think clearly. That, that wasn't even really me. It was just like this body on autopilot and... His son just broke down crying and the dad was able to tell him he was sorry and, and there was a, a, a bond healed um, between this father and son that was very beautiful and I felt very humble to be there to see that happen. And um, afterwards as this young man and I were talking and he was using EFT and he was letting go of things that he had seen in the war and of course his dad and some other things that had happened when he was younger. Um, he really started to get it. He really started to feel lighter. He went home and he was just so grateful to have some clarity about why his dad would have died like that. And he started sleeping again. He started taking back his life again. And um, to be able to see that and be part of that, to see this young man be able to take his power back was such a very, very wonderful thing. Um, the next person I would like to, next situation anyway, uh, being a a person who helps people get rid of a lot of this heavy pain they're carrying. I come across um, very, very tough things that people have gone through. I hear a lot of horror stories. Um, for instance, this one woman, her very first memory is that of being abused. And I guess I will have to tell you that is a first memory for many of the women that I help. And the one that I'm thinking of right now 
when she contacted me, she was ready to commit suicide. She just could not take this pain anymore. It was just too heavy. The memories were too frightening. And this woman was able to go through this journey work and using EFT, she was able to release all this pain. And this was work. She had a lot that she had to release and let go of. And the thing is, she didn't have to do this. She could have gone home, but she chose instead to take her power back. And now she is this amazing woman who will always be my friend. And I have to tell you, knowing where she started, knowing where she is now, I just, I adore her, I respect her, and I am just so incredibly proud of her and every person I have ever worked with. It has been a privilege for me. And these people are my heroes. I, I can't imagine going through some of what they have gone through. And I can fully understand why they wouldn't want to continue on and they wouldn't want to feel those things anymore. I mean, the, those nightmares and the pacing at night, not being able to get to sleep because you're so afraid of what will come up. And they took their power back. They took their life back. And now they are free. They walked down that road and they took their freedom and their peace back. So what I wanted to talk about today about heroes is the fact that if you look at all heroes, the guiding force behind every hero I had ever heard of, that, that force that propels them forward to do these heroic things, that force is love. If you see a serviceman fighting for his country, or you see a mother protecting her child, you see a father taking care of his family, the force behind all of these heroes is always love. People come to think of love as something that is just soft and flowy. But love is the strongest thing that exists. It's something we are made of. And every hero I have ever heard of has been backed by that strength and the force of love. And the reason I wanted to talk about that today is because there is, um, there is an untruth out there. There is a, a statement or something people believe in that says, you can't go back and change your past. And that is just not true. You can go back. You can change what has happened. You can make new movies for your mind. You can take your gifts from that. You have to, though, be at a place where you're un you can understand that you must love yourself enough to take your power back. A real hero, in my eyes, is someone who uses that power of love for good and goes out and takes care of things in this world and is not afraid to do that. They go out, they live their life, they feel that peace, they feel that freedom, they feel that strength, and they go forward and have this wonderful life. So when I read things that say, you cannot change the past, that is just not a truth to me because for myself and for my clients, we go back, if you want to look at it as time, which time is really just an earth thing. 
really what's happening is we have dimensions. They're just layered one upon the other. There is no, no real time in the dimensions. So it isn't necessarily that we go back in time and fix something in our life that is causing us pain. The, it would be more like us going to a different dimension and fixing what happened in that dimension and then bringing that forward and taking that power back in our life, not giving it away to other people, fixing the things that need to be fixed, taking our gifts away from what we have learned from all these situations that we have been through. There isn't one person out there that hasn't gone through something pretty tough in their life. They're like they say, you know, you've gone through things I don't think I can make it through. And I think I've gone through some things you wouldn't even want to try to get through yourself. So I want to give you some hope. I want you to understand that you don't have to wait for some person to come into your life and be a hero. That person is already in your life. That person is you. You can be the hero of your own life. You are the one constant person that is with you all the time. And you have the power to be that hero for yourself. Don't wait for some magical person to come in and take all your worries and your fears and everything away. You're that person. You can do the work. You can get rid of that pain. You can take your freedom back, take your power back, and live a life of peace and joy and happiness. So, to all of you out there who have done your work, you've taken your gifts, released your pain, and you've come from a place of not even wanting to be in this dimension anymore, to being this amazing person so in control of your life, so open to love, so open to the joys and pains that you will still go through until you cross over and go home again. You are my heroes. I am so proud of you. And I hope you will help other people understand that they don't have to wait for someone to come into their life and rescue them. That with some help, they can do that themselves. Thank you. Thank you all, all of you that I have worked with and all of you that I hope to work with yet, thank you for being brave enough to take that step. You're worth it. That's the part you have to get to. You have to get to that part where you say, I love who I am. I'm worth taking back my control for and taking my power back. I am worth it. I am a great human being. I can have a life of joy, and it's up to me to take care of that. Now, if you would like some help doing that, I always leave my address, my web address, attached to these videos. I'm just hoping you will understand you can do this. You can change your life. The things you've gone through have not been a mistake. We plan with our guides, with our gods, what we want to learn here in this earth school. We plan this. These are not mistakes. You are not being picked on. This is all for our learning. 
and you can do this. You can take that control back. Learn what you wanted to learn from your pain and let the rest go. My greatest hope is that you will reach out and be able to do that. Look for someone like me. Look for other people who maybe are closer to you that understand this process. And just do it because you really are worth it. You are worth being your own hero. All that power lies within you. All that love, all that goodness, it's already there. Don't wait for someone to come in and do that for you. You can do it. And if you want me to, I can help you. So, namaste, my dear friends. I hope you have a wonderful day or evening, wherever you are. Bye-bye.